Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's the Monday edition of uh, Talk Back, our one-hour edition, brought to you by Bulls Eyewear, with Missoula's only certified master optician, located there on South Reserve, right across from Larchmont Golf Course. Selway Armory on Stockyard Road. They have more guns and ammo than anyone in Missoula, Montana's premier firearms dealer. Karis Property Management. If you own <laughs> rental properties and you're ready to save time, money, and stress, just give them a call today at 543 9798 uh, Knife River Residential. Have them install new or repair your home's present asphalt driveway, concrete driveways, or sidewalks. Call 532-5250. And Hamilton's Denture Center. With 30 years of practice, combined with the latest technology for the best-fitting dentures, call 363-6000. Visit DentureCenter.biz. And we have lovely guests in the studio today, John. We're going to talk taxes, right? I believe so. And Well, more of the city budget and kind of some uh, inconsistencies, if you've been watching the paperwork closely. Yeah, yeah okay. Anyway, in the uh, studio today, we have Jane Van Fossen, a personal friend of mine, and uh, Sarah Weber, who I met for the first time today. Nice to have you in the studio. Thank, Thank you, John. Welcome to, welcome to both of you. So let, 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 let's set the table here. Uh, the city released its budget quite a while ago. July, I believe. In, in July. And uh, recently, when someone was looking for a copy of it, they, they asked, do you want the original or the revised budget? So tell me what that's all about. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know, Jane? I know a little bit about it. All right. So, so Jane is the one that asked. Okay. The... All right. So go ahead. Right. Um, on July 24th, mm-hmm. our city council voted on the fiscal year 18 budget right. and they also voted a resolution which set the appropriations limits in accordance with state law and that budget um, totaled 184 million dollars for all appropriations and in terms of the money that they planned to spend it was about 154 million dollars those are what are called budgeted expenditures okay so one hundred and fifty four million dollars for budgeted expenditures. And that would cover basically everything the city does. Mm-hmm, pretty right? much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of the outgo. Mm-hmm. Now on that the in- includes salaries and benefits. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. And debt service and right. capital investments. And so uh, does that include the debt service for the water company? Oh, what a good question. And I wish I had the good answer for that. <laughs> but that's okay. that's kind of, of still out there. Okay, all right. Um it's unclear whether the um, bonds that are issued for the water company will actually appear in the budget as part of the water company uh, section of the budget, which is what is under the enterprise funds. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get too technical here, right. but there's a portion of the budget that is enterprise funds, or whether it will appear under the debt service portion of the budget, which is where general obligation bonds tend to appear okay and i believe it will be the former okay but i'm not sure well what I, I know that one of the one of the questions that we had for the administration of the city when the water company was being proposed was is it is is the city owning the water company simply going to be a big piggy bank uh, for the city to use when there's a deficit someplace well we'll just jack up the uh, rates of the of the water company and we'll use that money to fill in whatever holes there might be and i was informed they're not able to do that because everything in the water system is under what what you had just said, an enterprise fund. So that would not be possible to do. And I'm hoping that's right. I'm not an expert. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that is that is what's being presented to okay. the public currently. All right. So please, please continue. Oh, um, where, would, where did I leave off? Well, yeah, I, I, I broke in when, when you said the enterprise fund. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So... Um, at any rate, I, I had just given you the figures that uh, were voted on and approved by the city council. There was a public hearing, and about 20 citizens showed up, and their complaint was, the appraisal on my house has gone way, way up this year. And um, so consequently, they weren't really protesting taxes. They were expressing concern that their taxes would be raised because their houses were now worth more. Now, this is back in July, yes. and then comes August when mm-hmm. the, the specter of those higher taxes actually came through with the, um, basically everybody's property values in Missoula got jacked up oh, sure. quite a bit, Yes, they right? did. Yes, they did. In fact, um, and this delighted the the mayor and the, and the city council because it gave them a much larger tax base to draw uh, money from 
but they didn't really um, ha- uh, they didn't really impose higher taxes. But because of the way you multiply, because of the multiplication, and this is really hard to right. describe on the on the radio, if your taxable valuation for your home is higher, if the and the mill levy stays constant, the result will be a higher dollar amount, right. even though the mill levy wasn't increased. Okay. So 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 they're they're safe in saying we didn't raise your taxes. That's right. uh, it, it's just that, that Missoula has become, and, and this is the city line. Mm-hmm. Missoula has become so prosperous and so successful, and there's so many new businesses coming into town that the the, the line that I've heard is the rising tide raises all boats. And in, in other words, uh, we have a, a, a higher tax base, so everybody's going to benefit. There'll be more jobs, uh, higher pay all this kind of stuff, and aren't we wonderful? So is, is that true or not, from your perspective? Well, I'm not going to dispute that there's a lot of growth right. and a lot of um, new development going on here in Missoula. I mean, anybody who drives around town can see what's going on at Southgate Mall and sure. the Stockman Bank and a number of other projects. Now, my understanding, and again, I'm not an expert on this topic. Got to get right on that mic. Go ahead. I'm not an expert right. on this topic. But a number of those developments have have received support through another entity in the city, which is a component organization called the Missoula Redevelopment Agency, right, the RDA. Or MRA, okay, which right. is governed by five mayoral appointees who make decisions about how tax. I'm again. I'm sorry. This is technical. How tax increment funding gets either loaned or given or used. So uh, to, to even make it a little bit more divisive, I guess, uh, but to paint a, a picture I think is a little bit clearer, you might live in a tax increment financing district or have a business near one. So, for example, on the south side of Missoula, um, this bridge is in RD3, a tax increment fin- financing district um, that goes all the way to the Southgate Mall and includes a uh, complex, including Cabela's and a couple of other, other south, stores. South Crossing. The South Crossing area. And that that uh, that district has been kind of stretched and in, included other stuff. Um, but all the while that they're picking which businesses get all these payouts, some businesses don't. Okay. And it's <laughs> it's up to this group of five selected by the mayor to choose who gets money from the city and who doesn't. I will add, John that their decisions are ratified by the city council. But currently, we're being served by a city council that votes 12-0 almost yeah. every vote, every Monday night. Tell you what, we're up against a commercial break. Uh, and this is fascinating stuff. I hope you've got your, your radios on. You're turning them up real loud and taking notes because it will be a test. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we would love to have your phone calls because these ladies have... Real radio headphones to strap on so they can visit with you. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's a civics test. Aha! 721-1290 is our number. 1-800-5. You just chased everybody away. Thanks. Uh. Okay. (laughs) We're going to come right back with more of Talk Back in a moment. (laughs) And we are back on Talk Back. 721-1290 is our number. 1-800-568-5309. Jane Van Fossen joining us here this morning. Sarah Weber is also here from the uh, Missoula Republicans. And uh, so it's good to have you here as well. Thank you. That's Missoula County Republican Women is our club. Fantastic. All right. Well, we have callers. So you can't join. <laughs> yes, yes, you can. can. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome can he join? Yes, yes, even, he can. even well, Peter would be welcome. Well, well does he have to go like, through a, like, a, a gender swap or no, something? No, 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 no. I can be part of the auxiliary. Oh, okay. Right? Basically, that's what it's like, yes. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, let's get, let's get to the phones. We've got Kathleen on the phone. Kathleen, you're up first. You're up with our guests, Jane and Sarah. Go ahead, please. Okay, you need to turn your radio down. And Hi. Good morning. Hey, um, you were talking about the appointed um, MRA. Is it Emily Bentley who is currently on the city council, part of that board? Do you happen to know, Jane? Not to my knowledge. Emily Bentley has taken over the job of, uh, I believe she's now a county employee, yeah. who heads for, who's the head of the fairgrounds. But she's I, what? She's the head of the fairgrounds. Well, it, oh, okay. And she will. her term will be expiring at the end of this year. Yeah, she's I, not running for re-election. Yeah. So she, you don't know if she's part of the MRA, the Missoula Redevelopment Agency? I'm 
confident she is not one of the five members currently. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. Thanks for the call. Uh, Jane, you're up next. You're on with uh, Jane Van Vossen. Hi, Jane. Jane to Jane. Go ahead. Jane, you mentioned when in your opening statement that you looked at the budget and they asked if you wanted the original or the revised. And I don't think you, you went on to explain what that was about. Is there a revised budget? Well, there was, but it was pretty ephemeral. Um, big word, uh, vocabulary test for the day. It appeared last week, um, and the total of that budget was $209 million Wait, for all appropriations, up from 184 so it so grew like twenty five million. It grew like twenty five million. No votes. This um, is what you received last week. Right, it was. Mm -hmm. And where did it come from? I mean, was it approved? Someone had to shunt it through the bureaucracy to get it out to you. I don't know how it took place. I will tell you that I was, I presented at the uh, Missoula County Republican Women my findings last Wednesday morning. And there was a pretty stunned reaction when hmm. I said that the budget had increased $25 million on paper. So is it possible to ask what that extra $25 million is going to? It's, it's spread throughout the entire it budget. Okay. Um, you did ask the mayor what was the I difference. Called, I, picked, I thought it was only fair. And what did he say? Um, he said he doesn't follow the numbers very closely. <laughs> and that, oh, my God. And that his chief administrative officer would be calling me. That's Dale Bickle. Well, that hasn't happened. Oh, he hasn't called you yet. So he well, told, he guess told what? You. However, there's another chapter. Okay, well, what, uh, let me just say this. Dale, if you're listening, this is a talk show that we have two lines open. If you'd like to call and explain this, not just to Jane, but to all of us, we'd love to be a part of that. Or so. if there's anybody in city government that does follow the numbers closely, all right, that'd be great. Well, let's uh, go, go ahead. Please continue Thank with your next chapter. I'd love an explanation. And, um, you know, when you don't get an explanation, you tend to fill in the blanks yourself. And here's my theory, if you want to hear All right, it. go ahead. Okay, I, I know that Missoula has acquired a very pricey water utility. I know that the tax base has grown enormously. I know that it's an election year. All three of those factors have create a lot of financial turmoil. Mm. So I suspect that what will happen is that um, the budget will not be increased prior to November 7th. <laughs> <laughs> which happens That's to be my election, guess. Which That's happens my to guess. be election day. Yeah, all right. So let's, let's continue on. Um, Oh, uh, go ahead. Did you have another question? Yes, there is. There is another development. Oh, hold, that you real, need real to quick, know about. we have another call. Or um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Kathleen, uh, Kathleen, did you have another question? No, this is no, Jane. I, Jane. Oh, Jane. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jane. Uh, I just wanted to clarify. What did they actually give you? A physical document that said original budget, and a new physical document that said revised budget. It didn't say that, but that's what it was. The two pieces of paper, that's what they were. Actually, um, what I received was a four-page layout of the budget uh, in its original version and a four-page layout in its modified version. But they both have the same, they bear the same 8, 9, whatever the number for the budget that was approved by city council. But basically what you have going on, and I've seen both of these documents at this point, <laughs> you have the system where you have a budget that's under a certain number that was voted on, and then you have another one that wasn't voted on. If you were there in July, this is not the same budget. And yet it bears the same framework and the same number and is now sitting in, uh, in Jane Van Fossen's hands. Um, but it's a very different document by $25 million. In terms of the numerical content. Yeah, in terms of the numbers that are in that spreadsheet. I have to tell you that I spent 23 years in the Navy and I've seen a lot of government budgets in my time. And uh, so I know how to read them. And... Uh, the thing that really leapt out at me about the $184 million version of the budget is that we start the year with a big deficit in the capital improvements program, which I was, I was glad to see because that answered an unanswered question that I'd had, which is where did all the money to pay for the lawyers over the course of the last year come from? And it, my theory is nobody has actually confirmed this, is that it came out of the capital improvements portion of the budget. And uh, that has to be backfilled. 
So what they're probably doing is doing a lot of notional uh, budgeting uh, to figure out how to fill that deficit. So uh, you were wondering about the uh, heads of the MRA. The most recently inducted member is Natasha Princing Jones, who actually ran the water system lawsuit. Right. She, she, uh, she, she's the attorney, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, who was, uh, when I went to the final the judgment with uh, Judge Townsend, she was the one who actually had the check, a handwritten check for $83 million. Was it like a, one of those big no, ones? No, it was just a regular check. regular, regular check. Um, Carl England is the chair. He's been there since 2016. Uh, then there's Melanie Brock, Nancy Moe, and Ruth Reinecke. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for your call. Jim, Susan, and Jerry, we're going to get you all on. We're up against a break. 721-1290 is our number. I know that you're sitting on the edge of your seat now because these are your tax dollars, ladies and gentlemen. So in case you're wondering why your property taxes went whoop, uh, give us a call and listen closely. Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody, on uh, TalkBack. We are getting an education in taxation. There, that's kind of a, a rhymey thing. Anyway, 721-1290, feeling I'm doing the alphabet rock or whatever. More vexation in your representation. Thank you very much. 721-1290 is our number, and uh, we have uh, Jane Van Fossen joining us, and she's going over the budget. You should see the paperwork she brought with her. And Sarah Weber, who is with the Missoula County Republican Women, right? Yes. All right. And, and auxiliary. And auxiliary, yes. I'm, I'm the auxiliary. You're the auxiliary. But let's get back to the phone. Now, is there anything you wanted to add to what Jane said uh, before we go to our next caller, Jane? Yes. I had told you about version one of the budget. Right. And then version two, which was two, uh, $25 million higher. Well, we now have version three as of Friday. And uh, what that is is a referral back to the city council, the way amendments are supposed to be done, and a public hearing will be held. It, first, it will be considered this coming Wednesday, I believe, by the um, Budget Committee of the Whole. And then there will be a public hearing, and then the City Council would take a vote, and then the numbers will be amended. And that's what's prescribed in state law. Question for you. Is Seriously, mm -hmm. after you got this problem and you confronted the mayor about it, do you think it triggered the upcoming version 3? Do you think if you hadn't have found version 2 that we'd ever have a discussion about it? No. I think it did trigger action in City Hall. And I think one citizen who takes the time to do their homework can trigger action in City Hall. That's why we love Jane. Uh, let's, get, let's get Jim on the line. Jim, uh, thanks for holding your own talk back. Go ahead. Good morning, guys. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. What's on your mind? Um, you got, uh, Somebody's not getting the full truth or else uh, somebody's lying there in your studio. Um, and I had a train of thought that when she told me that the mayor did not know what the numbers were, he just willy-nilly went and no, signed he, it? He, he, he just said he doesn't follow the numbers very closely. I think those were the words that this were was, used. This was after she asked him why there was a difference between the budget that was voted on and the budget that was dropped, what, last week? Mm -hmm. That had significant changes in there by about $25 million. Oh, 25 mil. Uh, that's no big deal. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, when I get back to the subject, um, I have a, a house that I rent out, and I'm cruising along at about $1,000 for a mortgage on it. And then my bank mortgage lender writes me, says, uh, it went up $100. And then four months later, it went up another $100. And I finally called them up and I asked them, what in the heck is going on? And they said it was 100% totally because of your city council, your city government is causing this. Who, who this, this, is, this is They've your... moved up. This is my bank lender. I'll tell you their name if you want it off the air and you can call them up and it's, ask them your mortgage, yourself. Your, yeah, your mortgage lender. Okay. All right. right. All right. And uh, I thought maybe they were trying to take a dip in, you know, our city council would never be corrupt. And uh, and uh, so if you'd like their name, you can call them up and ask. Them. But uh, right now, it is solely in the, the hands of those people that are the poet bro is what I call them. And uh, I think that uh, they all ought to be <clears throat> eradicated. Well, I'll tell you what, Jim, I'm going to put you on hold. And I'm, I'm going to get John, uh, if you could grab line three and find out what 
mortgage company that is. It would be interesting to find out and see exactly what we're talking about here. But let's uh, let's move along, and uh, let's get Susan on the line. Susan, you're on TalkBack. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to get right to the point of this whole discussion. I think uh, I appreciate Jane also because I don't even balance my checkbook. I just let the computer do it. Um, and I appreciate numbers people because that's what my husband is all about. He's a numbers guy. But the bottom line is that Mayor Ingen has been in office for too long, and I don't care who people vote for just so they don't vote for Mayor Ingen. I think he needs he needs to go, and um, I don't care who you vote for on the ballot, but whoever is on the ballot other than him, you need to not vote for John Ingen. And I, I for the first time in 25 years, my husband and I, as voters, are voting in the city. We've always been in the county, and we moved from on top of a mountain literally a few weeks ago to the city in Missoula, which is kind of a weird experience for us because we've always been in the area of the county with Brad Cheetah as our representative, who's a conservative, and now we are in the hotbed of liberalism. It's like, <laughs> whoa, this is like really exciting. But I want to say that, huh? Go ahead. Oh, but I was going to say the other thing is that we've got some people running uh, right now for the city council, namely Kathy Deshaw and um, uh, Jesse Ramos that are on the conservative side, that are on the pro-business side, and there may be others that I have heard about, that I have not heard about, that seem to have common sense. And I think, I wish Jane, I'm telling you right now, Jane, because you're a dear friend of mine, I wish you would run on the city council, because we need common sense. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or a Martian. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Martians are nice. They're kind of cute, and they have little antennas. I'm in the Martian but, auxiliary. Yes. I mean, really, I don't care what you are. But, the, um, uh, you know, I think we need people that are fiscally common sense. And I am really stupid. I mean, literally stupid when it comes to numbers. I'm scary stupid. So I would be horrible as a politician. Plus, I don't like meetings. Actually, if I, you don't follow the numbers, that seems to be like one of the main ingredients to be mayor at these times. Yeah. So. Well, and this is scary about this because there is so much money that has been wasted on lawyers. And my father was a lawyer for 50 years and I personally love lawyers because it's kept me out of trouble for a long time, and I love lawyers, but I don't love to pay lawyers. And as a taxpayer now in the city of Missoula, I am freaked out as to how much money the taxpayers of Missoula are now going to have to pay lawyers. All right. We gotta, uh, Susan, we got to take a break. So, Jane... I want you to run for city council <laughs> because you're a very smart person, and I don't really care if you're a Martian or a Republican or a Democrat. Okay. We need logical people. Goodbye. Thanks for the call. All right. By the way, Jim said because of the increases on his taxes, he's going to have to charge his renters $100 more to make it. Exactly. Um, which is, you know, if you're at the low end of the spectrum, if you're poor, I've, I've had to tr struggle to find rent in this town before. It's not easy. And to have your rent jump up by that much is a burden for those that can least afford it. Absolutely. Jerry and Jeff, we're going to get you guys on in just a minute. We have two lines open. Our guests, Jane Van Fossen, Sarah Weber. We're talking about the city budget and taxes and you. And we'd love to have you get involved either on Facebook or give us a call at 721-1290. And again, we would absolutely love to hear from any official from the city. Well, I know we're listening uh, uh, we would love to have you call and explain this. This, this would be your opportunity to talk to over 20,000 of your oh. constituents and tell us what is going on. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be back. Thanks for calling KGVO. This is John. Thanks for joining us on Talk Back. 
721-1290 is our number. We have our guests, uh, Jane Van Fossen and Sarah Weber. And before we get back into calls, I know, Sarah, you wanted to talk a little bit about the upcoming meeting for the Republican women. So yes. go ahead. Yes, I'd just like to mention that uh, Missoula County Republican Women does meet once a month, second Wednesday of the month. We meet at uh, the press box at noon, uh, as I said, second Wednesday of the month. And that's just off the Van Buren exit on Broadway. Uh, and Jane is our vice president. I'm president. And we have a lot of... Uh, Great plans for interesting speakers and topics coming up. I wanted to ask you, just real quickly, because I know Jane is the main guest, but have your ranks been growing ever since the taxes have been growing, going up or what? Well, yes, yeah, since in the last uh, five or six months, we have been just each, each meeting, we are reevaluating, do we have space to seat all these people? Uh, we just There's been a huge upswing of interest in the kinds of topics that we're discussing. And um, yes, I, I'm... So there's a groundswell. There's a, yes, I think there's a groundswell okay. of a response to not only taxes, but many other changes that people are experiencing. The thing that I've been talking about for years, and because people have been complaining uh, to me, uh, is why, why do we have all these, these people? that have, Why is it 12 to nothing? Why? And, and I said, because, <laughs> because people like you do not go out and find a candidate who is willing to run and willing to expend the effort and become a city councilor or run for mayor or whatever, mm-hmm. if you want to change the system, complaints will not do it. You have to, you have to hire the right people to uh, fiscally responsible people uh, that you believe are fiscally responsible, go in there and make their views known and change it from the inside. It's the only way it's going to do it. Am I right or not? Yes, yes. And I think this is this is the time and an opportunity for people to take a look at the candidates that are out there and see who among them are the fiscally conservative candidates and get out there and vote for them. And Jane, if you don't mind, you asked a permission to talk about that from your view, just as a, as a citizen. So you yes. want to go ahead, go, go ahead and do that. I'm not commenting on any of the candidates as All right. a member of our organization. Okay, right. I'm commenting using my First Amendment rights. Sure, right. As as a your talk a show citizen. rights, yeah. Yeah. my <laughs> talk show. Rights. Um, I am supporting Lisa Tripke for mayor, in her candidacy for mayor, and just as a matter of sheer coincidence, um, there's a letter to the editor that I wrote in today's Missoulian. Wow, it's got lots of numbers in it. Okay, wouldn't you think? And uh, I would would encourage your uh, listeners to go online to the Missoulian. And read the numbers. Or uh, if you want to make him really happy, go buy a paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Well, let, let, yep. me, let me challenge you real quick since you put out an opinion and this mm-hmm. is a talk show. You know, a lot of people are looking at the uh, field this time and they're like, well, Mayor Engen's been in the, he, know, he knows the system. He's, he's been around for a while. The economy seems to be improving in Missoula. Um, Tripke has never been in charge of a, a, well, at least an organization she's the size never, of the never city held of office. She's never held office. Um, that's saying, that might seem like a risky bet for some. Why is that a bet you're willing to take? Okay, why is that? Uh, I had met Lisa over about three months ago and have listened to her make presentations a number of times. I think that she is really committed to taking, paying attention to constituents. And I know that she has fiscally conservative intentions. The city currently has 603 employees now that we've brought on board the Mountain Water folks, and that's a big enterprise, and it's got 12 years. If you count the prior years when Mike Cadis was the mayor, it's really got about um, 24 years of, of momentum going uh, in, well, chemist, in the yeah. direction, yeah, even going back to, to Dan Chemist, um, in the direction of progressive Larger government. If there's a problem out there, the right solution is always more government. Right. And, and if I remember correctly, one of the things that John Engen told me personally was that the reason we have government is because government can take care of things we can't do on our own. I said, well, that, that certainly makes sense. But it, that there's, there's got to be a, a point where we have to stop the growth of government. We just have to. Well, I fully support government managing our schools to educate our, the next generations. I fully support gov- or providing public instruction, let me say. Um, I fully support us having a robust fire department and police department. There are a number of government functions that I right. think any citizen is in strong support. But do I think we need a couple dozen planners? Do I, th- do I think we need our developers? 
um, encountering incredible red tape before they can get permission to build something. Uh, these are these are overlays, government overlays right. that tend well, to be very costly. And there is this imagination currently springing forth from City Hall where there's a lot more that we can't do for ourselves, whether that be running our own composting companies or laying our own gravestones or, or running, running our, our own, own water, water system. Company. Yeah, like yeah. The, the private private market apparently is yeah. not um, as fit as it because, once was. Well, because we're all profit-driven and we're terrible. We're evil. So anyway, we're, we're going to come right back with more of Talk Back. Jerry, Jeff, Edna, and Bill, everybody wants to talk to Jane, and we're going to come right back with more in just a moment. Okay, thanks for joining us uh, here on TalkBack. 721-1290 is our number, 1-800-568-5309. I promise we'd go right to the phones because we have all four lines of humming, which makes Jane an official TalkBack rock star. So <laughs> let's get right to it. Uh, Jerry's been waiting the longest. Jerry, thank you for holding, sir. You're on with Jane Van Fossen. Go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, Jerry Ballas um, calling. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, hey, I've been on the city council before when some of the MRA districts uh, were approved and uh, expanded. And, uh, you know, I've been against them almost from day one. My, my main question for Jane is, uh, have you got the figure on how much uh, of the tax base that the tax increment funding and in MRA is, is taking out of Missoula, out of the Missoula base for the property tax? She's uh, she's looking that up. Hold on. Uh, I would say that I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. That number's not hard to find if you look at the budget. They have it per district separated out. Um, but I don't have it in front of me. Jane does. Okay, well, she's just got to search for it. Yeah, she's looking yeah. for it right now. Well, I, I just well, I'm waiting for Jane. Uh, I, I do support uh, uh, Trisky uh, for for mayor. Uh, you know, Mister Ringan has been in there just way, way too long, and he's come to the point where he doesn't listen to the general public. He listens to the people at City Hall, and and there, there's main driving force is the uh, everything at the City Hall drives John's. Uh, on his daily business. All right, Jerry, thanks for the call. Appreciate your call. So so have you had a chance to find that? I have it right here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Jerry, what I'm the figures I'm going to be talking about come from the state's certified tax valuation, which I know you're familiar with what that means. That's how much all the property, if you add it up in Missoula, is worth. Right. This in is what was done in August, released in August. No, actually it's released from the Department of Revenue in Helena to the county of Missoula and to the city of Missoula and to the school district and all of the other taxing jurisdictions. Each taxing jurisdiction is told by the state what the appraised value of its property is. And this was back in August that they released it, correct? On August 3rd. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In 20, for fiscal 2007, the tax increment funding portion was about $4.5 billion dollars. That's out of a total of $117 billion in tax value. Um, I'm sorry. I'm messing up here on my numbers. Um, at any rate, that was 4.5. It was from fiscal 17. Is that, that's 2017. Fiscal okay. 2017. Right. Fiscal, fiscal is a wonky number. It's not, yeah. it's not January yeah. to December. It runs yeah. July through June. Right. Okay. Yeah. But so 4.5 last year as compared to 7.5 this year is to be found in the tax increment. And that's because the tax base in some of these urban renewal districts has grown significantly because of new development. Right. Mm. Like, uh, I don't think, I'm sure the downtown Marriott isn't on the tax rolls yet because it's still under construction. Right. Probably the Stockman's Bank isn't, but there's been enough other development. And, and don't forget the riverfront area is going to be built here pretty quick, too, in the mm -hmm. next oh, couple yeah. of years. So. Yeah, so that 4.5 to 7.5 is going to balloon. And the thing is that those tax dollars or that tax value is set aside. It can only be spent within the boundaries of the district. Okay. It can't be spent for schools. It can't be spent for other purposes. Right. All yes. right. Let's, uh, let's move along and get uh, Jeff on the line. Jeff, thanks for holding. You're on TalkBack. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Jane, so much for bringing this to all of our attention. I uh, hope people will get more involved. Um, and Amen. It seems like no one has much time. And um, I'd like to just get to a couple of details. Um, and I hope I'm not being too redundant from your earlier discussion, but I, this tax increment uh, districts really concern me. And I don't think many people in the population understand 
if I understand it correctly, that uh, that an increased valuation on that property could be being used to reduce all of our taxes. And there's no assistance for other private uh, businesses or individuals uh, to take advantage of that uh, increased uh, revenue to the city budget. Is that is that a clear understanding or not? I think what you're saying is generally completely correct. If the mayor were in the room, though, right now, or, or people that support the redevelopment mm-hmm. process, they would argue the long-term benefits outweigh the short-term setbacks. Yes, you're right. Because we put this money back into the local area, it is taken out of the general fund for a while. But the long-term benefits of having a South Crossing that's profitable rather than an empty Kmart abandoned parking lot are enormous long-term. 20 years down the road, that'll be generating income for the city, and it wasn't really before. I, I, well, I see some of that advantage, but it seems like the, um, the city budget goes up 3 to 5% every year, whereas the cost of living increases on Social Security do not. And if anybody was uh, being thoughtful about their investments for retirement, they probably had it in some kind of safe investment. Maybe they had it in a, a mutual fund, or possibly they had it in a money market fund that's paying them almost zip. Um, but the city just doesn't get it that although uh, revenues for people on fixed incomes aren't really increasing and inflation isn't increasing, that they just need to be keep increasing our taxes. And so thank you so much, Jane. I hope more people will get involved, go down to these meetings. I know you'd rather poke yourself in the eye, <laughs> but please get involved. Thanks for the call, sir. We appreciate that. All right, let's get Edna's been waiting a long time. Edna, you're on Talkback. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you for taking my call. You this bet. is for Jane. I've been looking at Mayor Ingen's graphics on his social media and his um, website. And he suggests that there's no better time to live, work, and play in Missoula. And additionally, he says that, let me see if I can find this, that Missoula is one of the most affordable tax climates in the state. <laughs> Would you please address that for us today? Thank you very much. Wow. Ooh. All right. So, so is, is Missoula one of the most affordable tax climates in the state? Oh, boy. I've tried to figure that out. And the difficulty is, is comparing the way Billings manages its budget right. to the way that Bozeman manages its budget to the way that Missoula and you have to look at the interrelationship between each of uh, between Yellowstone County and Billings and Bozeman County and Bozeman. Yeah, Gallatin County. You know, so right. it it's a very complicated mosaic of choices that have been made historically. So to compare cities across the state is beyond my ability. There I are will... there are some easy things that you can say. So one of the things that you can say, and we've talked about before in, on the show, is is millage. Missoula relies heavily on raising mills in order to make its tax base, you know, for its uh, general fund. It mostly comes through property taxes directly through the uh, increase in, in, in the mills. Um, but other, other cities that just, just don't do it the same way. You get taxes from a variety of different uh, features, and it's very difficult to make the calculation to transfer that into a mill rate or into a standard way to understand your general tax burden. Um, colloquially... <laughs> If you talk to anyone who's lived here for any time, they can tell you Missoula taxes were high and have only been getting higher. We're going to come, come back, come right back. Bill and Candy are both uh, waiting to visit. We have two lines open. Only eight minutes left in our program. I hope that you've been uh, taking notes and listening. By the way, you can listen to this episode on our website a little bit later on. We'll have it up on our podcast uh, page, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. All right. Thanks for joining us here on Talkback. 721-1290 is our number. Uh, Jane Van Fossen joining us. And before we go any further, Sarah, you wanted to uh, kind of uh, uh, plug your website a little bit. Go ahead. I just wanted to encourage people to look us up at www.missoulacountyrepublicanwomen.com. And or please look at our Facebook page. It's an awesome Facebook page. It's beautifully maintained by our public relations specialist. And it's full of fantastic information. It's great. It's the greatest. It's the greatest. It's the greatest. <laughs> And could I give uh, your listeners a tip when they go to our Facebook page? Um, they can look in the photos section, and they'll see a recipe. Sorry, it's a women's organization that will tell them how to find their own tax bills online. Great. And it's step-by-step. Step. So even for those of 
those of us who have difficulty sometimes navigating websites. Thank you. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's step by step. And um, also, there is a template for how your tax bill looks. Okay, let's. Uh, and back. what the important parts of it are. Okay, let's get back to the phone. And uh, Bill, you've been waiting the longest. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, first of all, I want to say thank you to Jane and Sarah. Jane, I was at that presentation last week. It was a phenomenal, um, breathtaking event. Oh, thank Believe you, me. Bill. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I want to say uh, is Sarah, uh, Sarah's uh, headed that organization since, I think it's April of uh, this year. January, yeah. And it's, it's 180 degrees uh, changed for the better, as well as what I find uh, about it. It's it's really, even though it has the name Republican, it's all about information and getting getting people involved in their community. And uh, you know, I've I've seen people like Mark Thane and Mayor Ingen show up at, at that meeting, and they will take questions, and some of them are hard questions. And I would like to uh, finally say that. You know, there are a lot of good people out there uh, who vote, but not enough of them. A lot of them think it, their vote doesn't matter. But I know uh, that uh, if you uh, get a message out and get a little bit involved, you can really make a difference. And what we need is government that works, not government uh, by Bernie, uh, Bernie Madoff. All right. Uh, thank, you know, thank, thank, th that. Thanks for the call. Candy, you're on Talkback. Hi. Yes. Hi, Jane. Thanks. So much for this presentation. Even though I go regularly, I try to fight for some transparency in that consent agenda. And I know um, for years I've been uh, suggesting a CAFR uh, comprehensive annual financial report for the city. Uh, done out of this state, but I have yet to find somebody that wants to do that. I think they will surely be surprised with what's been banked in this city. Right. And um, real, real, and real I, quick, because we're running out of time. Oh, okay, and well, so uh, a question I would ask is: How uh, is my city-run sewer treatment plant fees? Showing up on my county taxes. All right, thanks for the call. So, any any question on that? I don't know. Oh, here we go. Well, it's okay. It's okay to say we don't know. <laughs> right. Now, you well, want to talk a little bit about the election? Is that right? Yes, I just wanted to point out to folks is that your ballots for this all all mail in election on November seventh are due to be in the mail on the eighteenth of October. A week later, the tax bills will be mailed out. So what I would urge folks to do is to take a breather when they receive their ballot and think through who it is they want to vote for and certainly factor in what the tax bill they receive the next week is. And as I said, we don't have a huge mill levy increase this year. So um, the jolt that people will see will be largely from the increased appraisals. And the other point I want to make is that uh, again, as a private citizen speaking, since I have a microphone, I am endorsing Jesse Ramos for Ward 4. He's a financially savvy, energetic young man. He'll be on Talkback tomorrow, along with Mr. Wilkins and uh, mm -hmm. Strandberg. All three of them, I give him 30 minutes yesterday. Or that's tomorrow. excellent, because that's one of our committed, that's a competitive ward. And in Ward 1, we only have one person running for office. And in Ward 6, I believe it is, we only have one person running for office, which is, in my, I love democracy, and that's a really unfortunate thing when you only have one person to choose from. Um, the other point I would make is to say again, I think uh, I will be voting for Lisa Tripke, and your educated listeners can make up their own minds. You betcha. All right, so we have like a minute and a half left in the show. Let's go try to get one more call on. Uh, Mike, real quickly, what's on your mind? Well, I don't know who said, who said this, but uh, it's that uh, diapers and politicians should be changed for the obvious reasons. I regularly change, that is. All right. Thanks for the call, Mike. All right. Uh, Jane, real quick, you're on Talkback. Go. We've got to listen a minute. Hello, Jane? Oh, yes, Jane, I wanted to ask you, could you make a comment about the fees? 
uh, in the in the budget, and how does that differ from taxes Are as you, a source of revenue? Thanks. In the budget, it appears in a column that's labeled non-tax revenue, and I think um, that anybody who has dealt with not uh, with the city government understands that um, impact fees and building permit fees, each of which they're budgeting for $1.8 million for impact fees this coming year and $1.8 million for building inspection fees, plus there are a plethora of other, other fees so that, are, that have been enacted by the council. So um, that's, that's a, not a tax burden, but it is a cost burden. You bet. And it impacts affordability. Real quick, uh, give us uh, the, your, your website. www.missoulacountyrepublicanwomen.com. And I want to thank both of you for being with you. You guys are awesome. And we have city council members tomorrow. That's right. All right. Thank you all for joining us. You guys have been a great audience. And join us again next time.